today we're making a special video for patients for your better understanding of the procedures that you will go through from the first step that you go into the doctor's office and till the last step that you have crowns. We will do it with Dr. Yonev. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Amazing. So let's start. Today, what we want to discuss is, as you said, from the first moment the patient comes to the clinic till the end when he has his crowns. This procedure, you can break down to a few steps. The first step is diagnosis. In the diagnosis, as a doctor, I need to know if for implantations, if we have enough bone, to know if there is enough bone for implants, uh, the x-ray exam that we're doing is called CBCT. It's a cone beam computer tomography. CBCT gives us, in the end, a cut of the jaw where you can examine the height and the width of the bone. You can see also the teeth. You, you can have all the information from this exam. So it's just uh, as tomography shows you the bone. Yeah. It's a computer tomography. I see. And just one more question. Can you say cone beam computed tomography four times <laughs> fast? No. Just use the CBCT <laughs> or just use the CT uh, as in uh, general medicine, but it's not the same thing. In CBCT, or what you have is the machine is making a lot of slices and then the computer collects all the slices and processes them to a 3D model of the jaws, of the bone, of the teeth. Uh, you can have even the gingiva and the soft tissues. You can see the nerves, you can see all the anatomic structures that you need for this procedure. But everything here is raw data. Uh, you can have it on a disk, you, you can have it sent to the mail, but as a doctor, I can't do anything with this 3D reconstruction. I can't know uh, all the dimensions, all the heights that I need to place the implants or to choose what implants I need to place. So in the first place, I take the 3D reconstruction of the bone and I cut it into three different slices. I have the horizontal slice, this one. I have a vertical slice and I have another vertical slice, it's coronal slice. It's from left to right, from uh, front to back, and the horizon part. Uh, in here you can see the front to back, in here you can see left to right, and you, this is the horizontal. In here you, I already have much more information because in this part, I can see uh, in the anterior area, the frontal bone, I can see the height of the bone, I can see the width of the bone, I can see the teeth, the cut of the teeth itself. In the left to right slice, I can see in the lower parts, the height and width of the bone, I can see the teeth, I, I can see different structures, for example, the sinuses. In the horizontal part, in this case, it gives me less information because I don't need to measure anything in the horizontal slice. But these two slices are used in most of the cases. These two slices are not enough because if I want to put an implant, not in the back area or in, or in the front area, these slices will give me not a straight cut of the jaw. I need a perpendicular cut of every place in the jaw or all of the places that I want to place the implants in. So in this case, we need to uh, make some modifications for these slices. The end result that I want to get is I want to have a perpendicular slice for every dot in the city that looks like the slice uh, near you. You know that it's perpendicular, you can see the height, the width, all of the parameters. By this slice, you can choose what implants I, sh I should use and how can I restore them in the future treatments? So the first thing that I'm going to do is make a line that is going through the whole jaw. As you can see, the blue lines. Mm -hmm. The blue lines go with the arch of the jaw uh, across all the teeth. To this line, I have perpendicular lines that go 
that goes each one millimeter, uh, this line, this line, this line, and every line has its own number. And it's a cut. Every yeah, it's a, a perfect pen perpendicular cut of every step of the arch of the jaw. So if in the future slices that I'll have, I'll know that number 10 is this slice. If I want to place implant in this area, I can use the slice of num number 10 and by this slice, I can measure the implant that I can place in this place, the height, the width of the implant. Mm -hmm. In here you can see the reconstruction of the jaw. If I will use only the blue lines that we showed before, but on this reconstruction you already have a ruler. You can see all the numbers below. All those numbers showing perpendicular cuts each one millimeter and they have their own number. So uh, as we talked before, slice number 10 is going to be here around this tooth. I can know by these cuts where they're going to be. And later on, I'll get from this cut the perpendicular slice of the jaw. These are all the individual cuts? Yeah, these are all the individual cuts. As a doctor, in the end, I get a few pages of a lot of cuts. In each cut, I know the number of the cut. And I have a ruler so I know I can measure the bone. I know this is 10 millimeters. I can see in here I have around six millimeters, for example, of bone. Uh, in the width of the jaw of the bone, I have about three, four. I can know and choose different types of implants, different sizes of implants for each place to position. It's something that can be made just with a CBCT uh, X-ray and not with any other technique. This is the model of the job. Yes. yes. Now that I know where I want to place the implants, now that I know uh, which implants I can place in this position, I need to know how to place the implants because even in the same area, I can place the implants in different angu angulations. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can move the implant a little bit forward, a little bit backwards. I have a little bit of game. In here you can see that I don't have the posterior teeth. And I know that I can move the implant a little bit uh, back, a little bit forward. There is no one place for the implant. There are, you can a little bit play with it. So in this case, in the first place to place correctly the implants, I need to have some design of the future crowns that I want the patient to have. In this case, we're doing it everything in CADCAM uh, on the computer. We design the crowns in the computer. I have the jaw. In this area, I design the two teeth I want to be in the future. I have the morphology, the anatomy of the teeth. Now I know the shape and the, uh, of the teeth, and from the shape of the teeth, I know where the implant should be. From the place where the implant should be, now I can make the impl implantation itself to place, place the implants. Because I had a 3D reconstruction before, and I have the 3D model of the, of, uh, the patient, I can superposition the 3D reconstruction with the 3D model, one on top of the another. Digital. Yeah, digitally. So you can see here, I have from the CT that I did, I have the bone, the 3D uh, reconstruction of the bone. I have the impression of the jaw that I made, and I superpositioned one, them one onto another. So in here, I see both of the crowns I designed. These are the crowns of the patient. This is his uh, CT. And in here, I can see how to place the implants. I know that the crown is supposed to be in this area, so the implant probably should be below the crown. So <laughs> probably, yeah, it, it's the best place for the implant. So I know the angulation, I know the position, the best position of the implant. I can see even different structures. What are the red lines? Yeah, the, the red line is my lowest part of the implant that I can go to because in the lower jaw, we have a nerve. 
that's responsible for the feeling in, of the lip, of the gum, of... Oh, the, the nerve and the jaw responsible for the lip? Yeah, exactly. So if you use too long implant and you harm the, the nerve, you can lose a uh, feeling in the lip. So this is the lowest part that you want. You even want to use a shorter implant to be sure that you won't go to the nerve. So in here we can choose the implants. We know we have a safe space between the implant and the nerve, our anatomical structures. Everything is done uh, according to the crowns that we designed before, the crowns that we know where they should be. And this way the implant will be positioned perfectly according to those crowns. Now we can make a surgical guide or if the positioning of the implant is very easy, we can position even free-handed. Uh, in these cases, we will show with surgical guide. Surgical guide is something that when we position the implant in the program, and there are a lot of programs, in here you can see a simulation from three-shape program, we can print a guide that will guide the implantation process. In the implantation process, the surgical guide will guide the drills and later on it will guide the implant to be inserted in the same position as we placed in the model uh, digitally. Mm -hmm. So this way we can ensure that the implants will be right under the crown and everything will go smoothly. In here you can see the program uh, exported our guide you can see two place for two implants as we uh, design those two crowns. Uh, you can write the name of the patient, you can do everything with the guide. It goes onto his teeth and then you just drill through the, the guide, the surgical guide, and place the implants also through the surgical guide. Yeah, it, it really helps with the procedure. Yeah, in here you can see the, the surgical guide. You can see place for two implants. Mm -hmm. uh, you just put it on the patient's teeth and you drill through the surgical guide and then place the implants also through the surgical and guide. And then you just remove the surgical guide. Yeah, you remove the surgical guide and that's all with the implantation process. From which material it's made? The surgical guide is printed mm -hmm. from uh, some kind of plastic that you can sterilize before the procedure. And in the surgical guide you insert uh, metal sleeves for the drills to go smoothly through the surgical guide. Now in the last part you have the implant in the jaw the doctor makes an impression mm -hmm. he sends to the technician and the technician need to design a crown for this implant uh, i'm going to show a cementable crown in this case because it's the probably easiest to explain in this case we have one implant and we want to have a restoration on one implant so we take a metal part that's called an abutment. Mm -hmm. The abutment serves as the crown of the tooth. If we wanted to make a crown on a tooth, we will make a preparation of the tooth. The preparation would be conical. And onto this cone, we would uh, cement or glue later on the crown. So in this case, we take an abutment that was uh, prefabricated in the factory. The abatement fits the implant. The abatment comes in a much higher version. You can just cut the abatment, and then by the design of the abatment, you can make the crown itself. So you just cut the abatment, you measure the height of the abatment, you process it a little bit, and then you just make the crown in the end. This crown will go into the patient's mouth. Onto this, this is a model. Yeah, this is a model, but the, later on, the next stage that we don't see here is the technician sends to the doctor the crown with the abutment. The doctor assembles the abutment onto the implant mm -hmm. and cements the crown. And that's all. And a heavy patient. Yeah, and a heavy patient with a tooth. A beautiful smile. Yeah. Thank you for explaining it to us You're today. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it enlightened you. Have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow. Send us your interesting cases and we will see what Dr. Yanis has to say about them. Have a great day. Thank you.